hello and welcome to worship. I invite you to join me in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in the faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Welcome to Abiding Presence Lutheran Church, a place of grace. All are welcome. Our mission is to seek God and serve others. We are in the time after Pentecost, and the presence of the Spirit is with us right now on this Trinity Sunday. This coming week is Spirit Week at Abiding Presence, so look for ways to celebrate the Spirit's work in our lives on social media all week long. Next weekend, there's going to be some changes that are happening in the worship life of Abiding Presence. Not only will we continue to worship on Sunday mornings in person at 11, but worship will resume on Saturday evening at 5.30 in person right here in the sanctuary, which means another change is happening as well on how we offer this online worship experience. Beginning next weekend, online worship will be made available at 11 a.m. on Sunday morning as we live stream that worship. For now, we, uh, for now, we ask that you continue to make reservations uh, for in-person so this way we can meet the differing needs of this community. 
There's been many people that are asking about masks in worship and on the abiding presence campus. Right now, we still require masks, and we thank you for serving others by wearing a mask at abiding presence. Your council is meeting this next week to discuss options and make decisions regarding masks, so look for more information to come next week about that. With summer upon us and more people willing to travel after a trying 18 months, this Place of Grace will continue to provide a ministry in your absence and will be here when you return. And I'd like to take a quick moment to remind all about the different ways that you can share your gifts with Abiding Presence. You can give online at aplc.org and just click the Give Now button. You can text to give at any time. Just text APLC to 73256. You can set up recurring gifts through your own bank, or you can log on to My APLC on our website to sign up for recurring gifts. This also, uh, this coming Monday is Memorial Day, and I'd like to invite you to pause for a moment as we have a moment of silence to remember those that are on our hearts and minds. Thank you. And now Mike Sayanis, our Minister of Youth, is here with a special announcement about our graduating seniors. Mike? We've reached that time of year again when our seniors are graduating and looking towards the future. And so we like to have uh, a chance for them to be able to express to the congregation what's next for them. And today we have Erica with us. Hi, I'm Erica Cambus. I graduated from San Antonio Christian School and I'll be studying psychology at the University of North Texas. We just want to take a moment and uh, wish our seniors well. So if you could, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for all of these wonderful young people. We ask that you watch over them, keep them safe as they go into this next phase of their lives. Let them know that they are loved and that their APLC family will always be here to encourage them and help them in their faith journey. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the hearing of God's word. A reading from Isaiah, chapter 6, beginning at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Word of God, word of life. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord 
the voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty, the voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple all say glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as King forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. A reading from Romans chapter 8 beginning at verse 12. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put the, to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Hey friends, I brought with me today for uh, our children's message a whole big bag of charcoal. I wonder, do you all ever use charcoal um, at your house? Yeah, I like to use charcoal at our house too. Sometimes we go outside and we barbecue with it. And this one is a full bag of charcoal. And these coal briquettes are kind of fun. They just, they just sit there and they'll burn and burn and burn all the time. We just listened to a... Uh, first lesson from Isaiah, and it had a coal in it. A long time ago, they used coal. Maybe they cooked with it, but they had a special purpose for it. Did you know that? They would take a bunch of coal, and they would put it into a bowl, and they would set it on the altar. And then they would light all the coals, and they would be burning, and then people would come in, and they would take things that they were offering up to God and place them into the coal, and they would burn them. So that way, they would smoke would rise up, and they did this to confess their sins. Now, we don't practice that anymore, um, but we still use coal in a lot of different places. But today we learned about how the, uh, uh, the, the people in Isaiah would be doing this. Well, Isaiah was in the temple today, and this seraph takes one of these coals and touches Isaiah's mouth with it. And it was burning hot, not something we should ever try to do. And it was interesting because Isaiah began to confess all of his brokenness. And then God called Isaiah and Isaiah responded, I'm here, I'll do what you're asking. And Isaiah came to believe. It's a pretty cool thing. So when you are working uh, out in the yard this weekend with your family and y'all are gonna barbecue and stuff, I want you to think about those coals that you may be using and maybe even invite the spirit to come with you on that day as well. Let's now sing our gospel acclamation.
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, and he was a leader of the Jews, and he came to Jesus at night, and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. For what is born of flesh is flesh. What is born of spirit is spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I say to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or goes or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. And Nicodemus said, how can these things be? And Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Last weekend, Stefan shared with us something pretty important. He said a phrase, he said it a few times, and you might even remember it. We are people in the time after Pentecost. The time after Pentecost is not the days of summer that we're marching through during the longest of our liturgical season. And the time after Pentecost is not just those days after the disciples received the Holy Spirit. The time after Pentecost is now. It's today, it's tomorrow, it's the next day, it's next year. The time after Pentecost does not end. In fact, you could say that because of this, we are Pentecost people. This summer, each weekend, we're going to be discussing what it means to be Pentecost people and looking at different action words of being a Pentecost people. But at the center of it all, and first and foremost, is that Pentecost people are immersed and filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the same spirit that was present at creation, moving over the waters, the same spirit that was descending on Jesus at his baptism, the same spirit that interpreted all those languages for the disciples. And this spirit lives inside each and every one of us and is aching to be shared with the world. So to highlight the presence of the spirit we at Abiding Presence are going to have our very own Spirit Week. Yes, think about like grade school and junior high Spirit Weeks. Over the next week, we invite you to look for ways to celebrate the different ways that the Spirit is alive and active in our own lives, from crazy hair pics to, to spirit selfies to pajama day. Yes, the Spirit is with you even when you're at home in your pajamas. And we invite you to participate in Spirit Week, which will culminate next weekend in the return to in-person worship on Saturday and a shift to a spirit-filled live stream worship on Sunday morning. The Spirit is with us, Pentecost people. And today, we're challenged to believe. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless us with the Spirit. Your never-failing gift is with us always even when we ignore it. Help us turn toward you and your spirit, believing that you call us to do your will in everything we say, do, and think. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pentecost people believe. That is our word for today. 
believe. This weekend we have two people in our lessons that come to believe. And we're gonna begin with Isaiah. This is a educated young man. He's living and growing up in an urban city, kind of like a San Antonio. He's part of all the privileged circles of Jerusalem, which is very different from all the other prophets that God calls. And he, we find him entering into the earthly temple of Solomon, and suddenly it's transformed into this spacious, heavenly temple. And God is seated on the throne, and God's majestic robe is just flowing out everywhere, encompassing the entire space. And this young man is witnessing something spectacular. No longer are the people to put their dependence on earthly kings and, and, and earthly rulers, but they're to put their dependence on God. And he started being surrounded by the smoke and this incense, and he knows where it's coming from, from the burnt offerings of confession. And in this emotional outburst, he confesses his brokenness. He confesses the people's brokenness, and he's overcome by his own sinful frailty, and he's standing before the enormity and the holiness of God, and he cries out, I'm broken. The people are broken. We're lost. And this seraph takes one of those coals and, and touches his mouth. And in that moment, he's consecrated. He's made holy. He's cleansed for God's divine purpose. To proclaim God's word to those broken people. And God says, whom shall I send? And Isaiah responds, here I am. Send me. Isaiah believes. And as hard as it's going to be, he believes that God has set him apart for God's divine purpose. Now, let's fast forward into the Gospel of John, because unlike Isaiah, it takes time for Nicodemus to come to believe. He's this well-schooled teacher. He's a Pharisee. He's a leader of the Jews, and he comes to Jesus at night, which is kind of questionable, but there seems to be an openness to Jesus being sent by God. It's like he knows there's something special about this man, this teacher, but he just can't quite put his finger on it. And he calls Jesus a teacher, and he's seemingly unwilling or maybe just unable at this point to learn from Jesus. And so Jesus teaches him with a metaphor about being born Again, And then he goes on to even explain what he's saying. It's like a coach drawing a play on a big whiteboard, pointing arrows left and right to the prophetic words of the Old Testament, trying to get Zacchaeus to make that connection that there's this covenant, this new covenant that will come through water and spirit. All right, Nicodemus, what is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Surely Nicodemus, who is a student of Scripture, is going to understand what Jesus is saying now. But all he can say at this moment is, I don't get it. How can this be? But there's a seed that's been planted in this interaction. Because later on, we find Nicodemus in the courts. And he's defending Jesus to all the other leaders and all the other Pharisees. He's challenging them to consider a person's innocence before proven guilty. Clearly, the spirit is stirring within him. And then at the end of the gospel, we find a humbled believer. No words, just actions. Nicodemus is carrying over 100 pounds of oils and, and, and spices, and he joins Joseph of Arimathea to bury this teacher who he now fully believes in. So for Isaiah, this happens like in an instance. But for Nicodemus, it burns a little bit longer. And what I've discovered in my own life is that both are very much true. There are times when I clearly know that God is calling me and that my lips are burning to speak God's prophetic message. And I'm absolute in my resolve and I'm ready for anything. 
And then there's other times that I'm confused and I get lost in the weeds of what God is asking of me or what God is speaking to me. Maybe I'm also fearful about what other people are going to think or, or, or how they're going to look at me or what they're going to say or how they're going to perceive me. And then as time passes, I step away from that fear and I start to dip my toes into that spiritual waters until I'm finally willing to be submerged in belief. And every time, it's the spirit at work within me. Martin Luther says in the third article of the Creed, when he's explaining it, he says that I cannot with my own understanding believe in Jesus Christ or come to him without the Holy Spirit. Pentecost people believe because we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes our responses, they happen quickly and sometimes slowly. We have been set apart. We have been consecrated. We have been made holy. We have been cleansed with water and spirit. And it's not for the self, but for God's divine purpose. For Isaiah, it was to share the word of God with broken people. For Nicodemus, it was to serve with this deep devotion and reverence. But what about us? What is burning to come forth from the people in the time after Pentecost. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the power revealed in, to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for the nations in the Middle East. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the healing of all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community as we return to in-person person gatherings, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. We remember also those lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please reach out and share God's peace with one another, maybe with a text or a phone call, but share God's peace in the world. Steve, peace be with you. Pentecost people believe, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly, but it's the spirit that works within us, bringing us to that place of belief. Our responses are made in a variety of ways, and of course, it is entirely up to us. One of the ways we respond is by sharing our financial gifts with the church. As we enter into those summer months, I invite you to be mindful that while we travel and visit other places, taking the spirit of God to others, this place of grace still needs you. Take a few moments to plan and secure how you will support the mission and ministry of Abiding Presence this summer. And as always, thank you for your continued generosity. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in I bind this day to me forever by power of faith, Christ incarnation, his baptism in the Jordan River, his cross of death for my salvation, his bursting forth from spice into is riding up the heavenly way, is coming at the day of doom. I bind unto myself today. I 
bind unto myself today the power of God to hold and lead his eye to watch his might to stay his ear to hark and to my need the wisdom of my God to teach his hand to guide his shield to ward the word of God to give me speech his heavenly host to be my God thy bind unto myself the name the strong name of the trinity by invocation of the same the three in one and one in three of whom all nature has creation eternal father spirit word praise to the lord of my salvation salvation is of christ the lord salvation is of christ the lord let us pray God of love, you call us beloved children. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us into service into a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join me in thanksgiving for the word. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into the darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of the world in need. Faithful to your word, draw near to all who call on you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now the blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.